Hello students, uh, so hope all are safe at home. So the topic what we were discussing is population interaction and in that population interaction we have already covered uh, four topics right. So what were the four topics that we have covered? The first topic was predation, then we com came to competition. In predation we saw what are the importance of uh, predators, prey's defense mechanism. Then in competition we saw Gauss exclusion principle, resource partitioning, inheritance uh, competition isn't it so those things we have competitive release then we went on for parasitism there we saw adaptation of parasite ectoendoparasite complex parasite brood parasitism etc isn't it then we came for uh, amensalism in, so in that we saw penicillin as has an antibiotic how penicillium is attacking staphylococcus right now we are moving on to the next population interaction that is commensalism okay so in commensalism actually what is happening in commensalism you can find one of the partner is being benefited and in this two interacting species one is neither benefited nor harmed okay so one is benefited other one is neither benefited nor harmed clear so we will be going with the examples so the first example what has been given is your uh, mango tree as well as an epiphyte so you know what an epiphyte is so in the diagram you can see orchard on mango tree so there you can find that uh, uh, the plants which are growing on some other plant as a support as a substratum they need it but that plant will not be harming that tree on which it is staying like mango tree is not at all harm nutrients they are not taking from them okay they just need a place where they can stay and grow uh, through their aerial roots they can take up the oxygen gases exchange water and all can be taken up okay so that sort of uh, interaction we call it as what we call it as commensalism here the epiphyte that is the orchard which is going on mango tree the orchard is benefited the mango tree is neither benefited as well as nor harmed is that clear so that is regarding the first example for commensalism in which orchard is benefited because it's getting a place to stay other than that the mango tree is neither benefited nor harmed the next is barnacles on whales okay so in the second diagram you can see vernacles are there on the body of the whales why they are there on the body of the whales because vernacles cannot move from one place to another so if one food is over in one region they have to move to the other place they cannot locomote themselves so what do they do they used to stick on to the vernacles used to stick on to the whale and when the whale is moving the vernacles also move with them and then they will be getting uh, some other location there they used to detach and they, they used to thrive there taking the food okay so here for locomotion from one place to another who is helping the whale is helping in this way whale is neither benefited nor harmed because it is not getting any benefit nor the vernacular is causing any harm but the vernacular is benefited because they can locomote from place to place in search of food okay so that is the second of the second example now moving on to the third example is cattle egret and grazing cattle so you would have seen these egrets are the birds that are present near the cattle now what is this uh, cattle doing the cattle is uprooting the uh, plants or the weeds when it is eating grazing browsing isn't it so when it is grazing when they are uprooting the plants at that time in the soil the insects which are present that also will be getting uprooted now when this insect is getting uprooted for the birds it's very egret that is the bird day it's very beneficial because it is getting the food the egret it's not visible the insects were not visible now since the cattle has uprooted the weeds what happens happens is that the egret can see them and they can have it as their food okay so like that uh, who is benefited the egret is benefited the cattle is benefited or harmed no cattle is neither benefited nor harmed okay so that is the uh, next example now moving on to the third uh, sorry fourth example is that sea anemone and clone fish okay you can see sea anemone there the one who is having the tentacles the hydra like structures the sea anemone we call and you can find the white and red uh, black um, fish there that is the clone fish okay now see the tentacles what is the property of the sea, uh, sea anemone is that the tentacles on the tips they have a toxin isn't it hypnotizing toxin so if any predator comes in this tentacles will stink onto the predator and kill the predator and they will have it as a food now this clone fish is a friend of sea anemone so they will not be attacking the clone fish clear so clone fish when they are deducting that if some enemy is coming the predator is coming to attack the clone fish the clone fish will immediately go and find the rescue in case of sea anemone they will be going uh, towards them and they will just uh, in between the tentacles they will go there and hide themselves why they are hiding themselves because um, the thing is uh, 
in order to escape okay at that time the predator when you see they will be very much scared because uh, it's a sea animal it's uh, hypnotizing in nature so the predator will not have the guts to go and attack the clone fish when it is in the sea animal like this the sea animal just they are staying there it is not doing anything but the clone fish is rescued from the predator is that clear so now this clone fish is benefited because it's getting a rescue since it is going and hiding themselves in the sea animal now sea animal is neither benefited nor harm with this what is over we have completed a uh, common salism the next interaction what we are going to see is mutualism okay so that is the last interaction the last part of the class now moving on to this mutualism we have already mm, learned what is mutualism otherwise the synonym term what we use is symbiosis symbiotic relationship right so this symbiosis or symbiotic relationship mutualism what is the interaction which is taking place that also we have confirmed mutualism mutually the partners are benefited so the two species are both of them are benefited in one way or the other okay so that sort of interaction we call it as what we call it as mutualism so the first example of so species a is also benefited species b is also benefited those who are in interaction both are benefited clear so that when we call it as what we call them as mutualism so one by one example we will see lichen lichen we have already learned many a times isn't it lichen you can find there are two organisms staying together one is algae and the second one is your fungi algae is preparing food and giving it to fungi fungi is taking the nutrients and water from the soil and giving it to algae to prepare food now who is all is benefited this algae is also benefited kyunki usko kya mil raha they are getting the food as well as they are getting the um, sorry the fungi is benefited because it is getting the food which has been prepared by algae and how is this fungi benefited uh, by getting the food now is this algae benefited algae is benefited as fungi is taking what the water the nutrients they are absorbing and giving it to algae come on baba you make some food and give it to me okay so like this both the partners are benefited so that interaction we call it as the interaction which is noted in a lichen mutualism okay the next is mycorrhiza this also we have discussed mycorrhiza is the association between a fungi and the roots of higher plants isn't it so the fungi when you are seeing what is this fungi doing this fungi which is present in the roots of higher plants we have discussed in uh, the chapter uh, microbes in human welfare they are absorbing phosphorus from the soil they are making the plant resistant to salinity and rot they are increasing the yield of the crop they are resistant to pathogens right so in this way the plant is safe because fungi is doing all these functions to the plants in return what the plant is doing to the fungi the fungi is being fed by the plant so the nutrients what they are getting they are not exploiting okay they will not take all the nutrients a little bit of nutrients come on i am giving you this much thing you give me a little bit okay so like that they will be taking some amount of nutrients um, the food they will be getting it from where the roots of the plant so in that case both are benefited the plant is also benefited getting phosphorus drought resistant salinity resistant and they are resistant to pathogens yield is increased because of this mycorrhiza that is a fungi in mycorrhiza and when you are seeing how is the fungi benefited it is getting the food okay so again this is a mutual relationship both the partners are benefited now we are moving on to the next example is mutualism which you can find between the plants and animals through pollination and seed dispersal there are a lot of uh, what is that mutualism benefited okay so how it is now listen very carefully plant and animal <coughs> how is the plant benefited how is the animal benefited that's what we are going to see some uh, terms also we will be learning new okay so how are they benefited listen carefully animal how it is benefited animal when they are going means helping in cross pollination okay helping in cross pollination means uh, for something only they will be going and visiting those flowers isn't it so for what they are going and visiting those plants and all they will be getting food either in the form of nectar or edible pollen grains are there okay so some parts will be edible for the insect or the birds it is edible to them so what these animals will do they will be going to the flowers they will be visiting different flowers trying to take the food from them at that time okay animal is benefited now it is getting food or it is getting uh, the nectar there that is also in the form of food okay so like that they are benefited now how was this uh, plant benefited when these animals are visiting actually pollen grains are present on their body the pollen grains gets dusted onto the stigma of those plants okay and they will be helping in what they will be helping in cross pollination 
along with that sometimes the seeds when you see they also get stuck into these animals and the seeds are transferred from one location to another so that all will not be crowdedly present in one location wherein they will have competition for nutrition so when it is dispersed they will be reaching different places there they can grow okay so they will be helping in what seed dispersal so pollination the plant is getting benefit the seed dispersal also plant is getting benefit. How is animal getting benefit? Because it is getting the food in the form of nectar or pollen grains or any sort of plant material which can be taken by them as food. Okay. So like that they are benefited. Now we are going to discuss two topics which has been detailedly discussed in case of mutualism. One is the fig tree and the waps. Okay. You can see this is the fig tree and uh, waps is the insects which are present on the top of the fig fruit you can find isn't it so this fig fruit when you are seeing actually this waps and fig is very very important for survival if uh, the fig has to survive waps is necessary okay so they are co-evolving uh, things now how they are benefit means interdependent that's what we are going to see okay now listen students actually what is happening is that this waps what they used to do is that they used to visit the fig flower and they used to vis when they are visiting the fig flower for nectar for getting the food at that time actually they are also doing one thing is that they are uh, what is that they are laying the eggs what they are doing they are laying the eggs okay eggs in the flower which ovary part they are laying the uh, eggs so when the eggs are being laid at that time the waps is laying the eggs there for nourishment and along with that when you are doing the wasp is helping in pollination because one flower to another flower another flower they will be going so they are also collecting pollen grains from one transferring it to the stigma of the other like that they are helping in pollination the waps is helping in pollination along with that the wasp is also laying the egg or a bear in the fruit of the uh, plant okay so they are visiting the flower stage there they are pollinating and thereafter they are laying the um, eggs okay so this egg when you are seeing when this egg is hatching out okay so when the egg is hatching out actually what is happening is that they are getting nourishment the larva is getting nourishment food from where from the fruit which has been present in that only they have laid isn't it so they will be getting food from there so like this who is benefited the larva of the um, waps is getting benefited okay now uh, the fig is providing them the food nourishment after some time what they will happen is that when the fruit and all will get ripened gradually they will decompose this um, waps will be coming out and then they will be flying out okay otherwise when we are eating also we will be removing it at that time also when you find fine they will be flying out so like that um, they are helping in what laying a site it is acting as a site for laying eggs so in the fruits of the fig plant only who will be laying the eggs the waps uh, insect will be laying the eggs so this term we use the term is ov position what do we call this one ov position theek hai so kya hota hai ki waps jaake flowers mein pollination karne ke liye help kar raha hai ek baat hai aur dusra kya hota hai jab ye waps jaake flowers mein ja raha hai wahan pe bhi fruit bhi rahega wahan pe kya karega ye waps uska uh, eggs wahan pe lay kar dega theek hai सो ले करने के बाद क्या होता है एग्स जब हैच आउट होके आते हैं लार्वा स्टेज उसका फूड किस कहाँ से मिल रहा है उस फ्रूट से ही मिल रहा है और वहाँ पे वो ग्रो हो रहा है थोड़े देर बाद क्या होगा ग्रो होने के बाद जब फ्रूट डिकम्पोज हो जाएगा यदि हम लोग काटेंगे तो ऑटोमेटिकली वो वहाँ से निकाल के चला जाएगा नीचे गिरेगा तो डिकम्पोज होकर बाहर निकाल के वो चला जाएगा सो so, उसको एग ले करने के लिए इन ऑर्डर टू ले द एग्स दे नीड अ साइट that's need a site and what is the site that is the fig fruit without them it is not possible is that clear so like that who is benefited uh, both of them are benefited because for oviposition the waps is benefited the larva is getting the food happy and when you are seeing then the waps is visiting different flowers at that time it is helping in pollination so that the fig is also getting much amount of seed fruit they can develop oh, is that clear so like this both of them are benefited now moving on to the last one that is your mediterranean or fish okay so that i have already told you floral patterns attracting insects uh, that's why they are attracting because they are acting as what pollinators good pollinators because of nectar smell color and all they will be getting attraction and they will be helping in pollination okay yeah now moving, moving on to the last part of the chapter that is sexual deceit of ophrys that is mediterranean orchid you can see this is the uh, flower mediterranean orchid in this flower 
the flowers one of the petal okay the one of the petal is mediterranean orchids flower may one of the petal jo hai it is resembling like a female bee now male bees are there right so male bees what they think is that it is a female bee they think it is a female bee it's not a flower it's a female bee so what the male bee will do male bee will be getting attracted obviously it's since it is a female bee so they will be getting attracted in order to have sex so what they will be doing they will be going and laying their pollen grains they will be dispersing their pollen grains where discharging the pollen grains into the body of that petal <laughs> they think which is that sir female bee they will be going and laying the uh, pollen grains okay now when they are laying the pollen grains obviously what is not going to take place copulation fertilization is not going to take place because one is the um, insect and another one is a flower isn't it so obviously what is not going to take place fertilization is not going to take place so just they are dispersing their sperms um, the male gametes into it the thing into it sorry not the pollen grains the male gametes into it so this male gametes when it is uh, being dispersed so at that time when you are seeing actually copulation is taking place but it is not the true copulation because one is the insect the male gamete of the insect is being discharged the sperms are being discharged into the flower okay which is looking like a female okay so this sort of um, interaction we call it as pseudo copulation what do we call this interaction pseudo copulation okay so they are dusting and at that same time what will be happening is that the insect's body the pollen grains will be deposited right so when this insect is going in again uh, visiting on another female uh, flower so what they will do the pollen grains will be discharged uh, into the flower and uh, there they will be helping in what they will be helping in fertilization of the flower okay so this uh, thing we call it as sexual deceit because both of them are benefited the male bee how it is benefited one is that it is getting reward as nectar there along with that its sexual urge is also being fulfilled because it's uh, going and pseudo copulating with the same that's why the sexual urge to some extent is fulfilled so that's why the male bee is benefited and how is this uh, or mediterranean orchid benefited since uh, this process is taking place they are dusting the pollen grains which is helping in pollination and fertilization of the uh, mediterranean orchids okay so like this who is benefited the plant the mediterranean orchids is also benefited so here we have learned lichen algae and fungi second we have learned mycorrhiza fungi with roots of higher plants then we learned uh, oviposition term where fig and wabs fig and wabs they need to live together wabs is benefited because it's getting uh, the food the larva is getting the food and how is the plant benefited it is helping in pollination and here also mediterranean orchids also you can find how is the plant benefited the plant is helping in what the bee is helping in uh, pollination as well as uh, they are also helping in what pollination and fertilization right and uh, how was that bee benefited sexual disease is taking place sexual urge is being fulfilled as well as they are getting reward in the form of food okay so this is how these uh, things are getting benefited so with this uh the chapter is over hope you all have a nice day thank you bye bye